Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world around, wanna see it now. And get in that car Leave a little note and we'll Hey everyone, welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife. I'm so glad you're here. I just got back from the farm and my hair is a mess. So, but Isaac, we have gathered some tomatoes. There's some here. There's some over here on my um, island. I'm actually got those washed and any spots cut out. Um, you know, I had such a fiasco with my garden the last like three or four years i don't even know if i'm gonna try one next year but anyway i am going to try to salvage some of the tomatoes uh, and make a little small batch of salsa and um, i'm not really following a recipe i'm just throwing what we're getting out of the garden into this recipe not really following anything um, this is not like my normal salsa recipe it is so delicious but um we're just going to throw this together because I really don't know amounts and what I have. But what I'm going to do first is I've got some water coming to boil on the stovetop. I'm going to drop the tomatoes in. I've scored them. I'm going to drop the tomatoes in for about 60 seconds, pull them out, put them in some cold water, and then the peel comes right off. I'll chop up the tomatoes and see how much I have, and then that will depend on what we do with the rest so it's just gonna be a small fast quick batch of salsa um, just to have here so anyway all right I will see you guys back in just a little bit okay guys I started to finish all this up before I brought you back but I thought you might want to see it what I did was I did put this was boiling water I've cut it off I dropped the tomatoes in there you know about four to four tomatoes in in the pot for about 30 uh, for about 60 seconds and then i transferred them to this which was cold water that i had put some ice in the ice is all melted now but as you can see i have some in there and then i transferred them to this plate um just because i wasn't ready to chop them but now let me just these are two these are the three i've gotten the skins off of and they are ready to be sliced up or chopped up. I'll show you how easy the skin comes off. I remember, I took a knife, and as you can see on this one, I scored it. I did like an X in the end, dropped them in the boiling water for 60 seconds, transferred them to ice water, and now let me just show you how easy the skin comes off. All right, we're just going to take this and just look at the skin. It just peels absolutely right off that tomato and so then I just take a knife and come in here and I cut the core out and if I missed any bad spots I just um, get those but I had cut that one out all right let me show you one more here's one you can see where I did the the scoring the X and then just watch this the skin literally just slides right off um, so this is just going to be a quick, easy, what to do with my knife, quick and easy salsa. It's not going to be my normal big batch salsa. I'm just using stuff I have on hand and so forth. So it's going to be delicious. Going to be delicious. Okay, I just wanted to show that you that process. Now what I'm going to do is just, you know, kind of dice up the tomatoes best I can um, just to see how much I have so I know how much of the other stuff I need to chop up. Okay, everybody, I have well over nine cups of tomatoes here. And so now what I'm doing is I am chopping up some green peppers from the garden. Um, and I'm just going to chop as many as I have. I have some red. I have some kind of a yellow and green one. And then I have some in the freezer that I've put up from before. So we're just going to use what I've got. And I'm not going to the store for anything. We're just going to go with it. All right. So 
Let me get all these chopped up, wash up the rest of them, and I'm gonna go with two and a half to three cups of green peppers. So, we'll see what I've got here. Oh, I've already almost got two cups. Okay, I'm gonna keep chopping. I'll bring you back in just a minute. Okay, everyone, I put all my beautiful colored peppers. I had about three cups chopped, two and a half to three cups. I'm gonna chop up about the same amount of onion now, and that'll go in. And uh, so yeah, I'll bring you back when that's done. Okay, y'all, so here's the part I'm dreading, is how many jalapenos to add. The actual recipe usually uses about four medium-sized jalapenos. Well, mine are teeny tiny small, but Maria, if you remember my friend Maria, she taught me that when you see the cracks on them, that means they're, they're even hotter. So, um, so what I'm saying is the recipe normally is four. Normally I would use four medium jalapenos, but I have a little extra and my jalapenos are small. They're not really medium. They're small, but they're probably hot. So I'm thinking about just stopping at five. And see, this one's got bunches of cracks. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to stop at five. And I'm going to chop them super fine. All right. I'm just talking this through with you guys. Even though I'm going ahead and doing what I'm going to do, I'm just talking it through with you. <laughs> that helps me, you know. All right. All right, I'm gonna chop it up and get this in, and then we'll start adding the salt, vinegar, and that kind of stuff. Okay, everyone, the jalapenos are now in there, so I'm gonna use uh, if you, eight to nine cloves of garlic, so I'm gonna go in with three tablespoons, three good tablespoons of minced garlic. Let's just scrape this out around the edge. With salsa, can you really have too much garlic? I mean, I guess you can, but. <laughs> um, okay, so now we're going to add some vinegar. We're going to add a cup of white vinegar. Now, the vinegar is going to serve two purposes. The vinegar is going to serve as a brightener. It's going to brighten this up and give it that good, fresh, wonderful taste. But it's also going to aid in the acidity for the water bath canning process. So the vinegar is serving two purposes. So that's a cup of white vinegar. All right, and I'm going to go in um, with some salt. I am going to, uh, let's see. I'm going to do two tablespoons of salt. This is a half tablespoon measure that I have. And I'm just going to use my canning salt. So I need four of these because it's a half tablespoon. on to simmer and we're going to let it simmer for about I don't know 30 minutes 40 minutes I'm going to get it all stirred up and let this simmer I'm going to leave the lid off for now um because I, I you know in case it's got too much juices I want that evaporation to come off but oh look at this isn't this beautiful Oh my goodness, whoops, pepper's overboard. Okay, all right, let me get this to simmering for about, and while it's simmering, I'm gonna go hunt up some pint-sized jars. I definitely wanna do these in pints. So, we are going to um, go hunt up some jars while this is simmering. Okay, I'll bring you back in just a minute. 
Now that the salsas get in hot, I'm going to add one more thing just to bring out that richness and thickness of the tomato, and that is a can of tomato paste. And um, we're just going to add that in and let it melt down as it um, gets hot. As it gets hot, it'll melt down and we'll stir it in. But um, I was kind of iffy about this. But I'm going for it. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm not gonna go for all of it. I'm gonna put a little bit back in. And try it before we add the whole can. I was really iffy on this part. I didn't know. I've never added tomato paste to my salsa before, so I probably put a fourth of a can in there, and we're going to see, and then we'll, if I need more, I'm not going to add any sugar to this recipe at all. taste it and see what we think. All right, everyone, my salsa is cooked up and ready. I did add um, one thing off camera that you guys did not see. You can probably see these little black flecks. What I did was I actually was going to put my cannon salt up and found a can, just a store-bought can of fire-roasted tomatoes, and I just threw that in there. I thought it would give it a good flavor. And so if you've ever bought fire-roasted tomatoes, you know it comes with the little charred bits in it. So um, this is looking super delicious. I did scoop off a little bit of the juice. Um, not much, just a little bit. And so we are ready to jar this up. I have my lids out here ready and guys if you've never used the four jar lids they are my all-time favorite canning lids and there is a link with a discount code down in the description of my videos um, they're my favorite and my jars washed and ready and so we're ready to start jarring these up I also have my water bath canner here with some water in it. I need to give a splash of vinegar in there just to keep my jars from getting foggy. So I'm going to put just a splash of vinegar in and we'll be getting started jarring these up. Hey everyone, what I'm going to do now is just clean the rims. I've got some white vinegar on a paper towel. I'm just going to be sure there's nothing on there because I did 
lift the ladle up over <laughs> the jars. So I very well could have dripped, dripped some salsa on there. Now, if I have room, once I get all these jars in the um, water bath canner, if I have room, I'm actually going to go ahead and, and get that juice jarred up and keep that to go in like vegetable soup or something in the winter. Um, it's just good juice, flavored juice that I just dipped out of this. About that one a little bit too full. You want about a half an inch head space. grab my rings and then we'll start putting it in the water bath once I get everything in the water bath I will turn the burner on I will um, bring it to a boil once it boils once I get it to a boil then I will start my timer not before but once I get it to a boil I will start my timer and we're gonna process, I think maybe 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna put the rings on and I'll bring you back and let you know if I have room for some juice. I did have some room, but I think it's only gonna make one pint of juice and with a little bit left over. Uh, maybe another pint. Let me let me try. I wasn't gonna try because I didn't want to um, wash the jar if I don't make it. But might as well try. Quit being lazy, Leslie. I'm gonna pour away from me this time. I believe we'll make it work. stuff. We're going to use every bit of this. Every bit. Okay. So now if I can just remember which is, I think I, I'll be able to tell which is the juice and which is the salsa. I think it'll be, oops, let me wipe that lid off. I think it'll be pretty obvious. Okay. All right. I'm over here. I'm going to set this down into um, it has actually cooled. So I'm going to set this down into the water bath. My jars are completely submerged by water. So they are completely covered by water. And we're going to turn this on. Turn it on high. Once it begins to boil, I'll put the lid on. Well, I'll go ahead and put the lid on. But once it begins to boil, I'll start the timer for 30 minutes. Okay, everyone, so the salsa is complete, and I'm just going to take the lid off and let it sit in here for about five minutes, and then we'll start getting them out. Okay, everyone, there they are. Aren't they absolutely beautiful? This is my favorite part is listening for them to seal. I've been hearing several so far. Uh, I think I may have one to two. I think I have two or three left to go um, but they are absolutely beautiful and I'm excited to try them so now let's talk about Bryant's hay baler before we talk about the hay baler let me just say that this salsa recipe was absolutely and me even making salsa was a total impulse thing Isaac had picked the tomatoes yesterday and I was I really thought I was going to be throwing some out because I saw they had some like splits or some bad places. And so I thought I was just going to go toss them outside. And he had picked several peppers and he mentioned salsa last night, but I had no intentions of making salsa. But I, I just did. And y'all, that is a big deal for me. I don't ever just get up and make something just 
to make it. I, um, I think about and plan what I'm cooking and making. So this was kind of a weird day for me. But anyway, okay, now let's go to the hay baler. And here it comes, y'all. That's it. So there comes the new one up the road. But let's go um, see the old one for a little bit. Well, goodbye, old friend. It's been a great, great ride. But... We got a brand new baler. So now that I've had a little bit of fun with the editing portion of <laughs> the new baler, let's just take a look at it coming in. While we're waiting for the new hay baler to arrive, Bryant and Isaac are going up and down the road on the tractors moving hay bales. And Isaac is flying. His daddy will probably tell him to slow it down. <laughs> and here it comes, y'all. That's it. There she goes, y'all. Bryant must have saw him coming. Because look, he's pulling in and he does not have a hay bale. He's like a kid in a toy shop. <laughs> I believe he's excited, y'all. Let's go check it out. <laughs> you won't get in there and raise the back door now. I'll do that. Alright, let's do it. Fire it up. Raise the back door and I'll show you how to hold it. Oh. See now I gotta pull it out. You feel it now. You'll have to work the whole handle out, so keep working it. There you go. You feel it come out? Yep. He goes back in Safety first. There she is. It's similar design as the new ball. Oh yeah. Single feed, roll starter, slid rollers. Yep. Alright, and what I was talking about earlier is when that uh, left bill comes out, it'll stick it right in here. Rat, 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 cut. Alright, if, if you get to go on and you bail 50 bales, the back door says it won't show. 
first thing you do is come back here and check these sensors. When you got your door shut, make sure they come down because these sensors touch on the knobs right here. They get their magnetic force from there. Okay. And that makes the light light up in that thing. You have a pocket knife, you can stick it right under there and see how the light come on. But basically what happens is the open circuit and that creates the ground. Well, I'm going to end today's video right here. I hope you enjoyed just making some impulsive salsa with me. And stay tuned tomorrow. We're going to have the delicious mustard and Parmesan encrusted pork chops. Uh, I'm not sure what the rest of the week holds, but it's going to be great. It's going to be fun. And I'm sure it started raining as soon as the baler got here. But I'm sure that we will be videoing the new baler on its maiden voyage um, soon. So, all right. So, thank you guys for watching The Farm and Pastor's Wife. I love you so much. Remember, if the grease is hot enough, you can fry anything. Bye, y'all.